Hello, this is Dedry with Iron and Pearls. Welcome back. Uh, today I wanted to talk to you about something that's near to my heart. Um, back when I was 15, I ended up accepting the Lord as my Savior. And um, I just want to share a scripture with you. John 3.16 tells us, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever should believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And that lets us know that we are to come to God just as we are. You don't have to clean up. You don't have to put on dress clothes. You don't have to stop doing what you're doing. You don't have to leave the job, get a new job. You don't have to change family members. There's a lot of things you do not have to do. Because he tells us further on in scripture that while we were yet sinners, he died for us. So if we just look at that verse, John 3, 16, for God so loved the world, that means the entire world, the whole entirety, all the people in the world. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, the only son that he sent, the only son that was born of a teenager, that the God the Father himself, the Spirit, impregnated her and that he sent his only son that whosoever should believe in him that means all you have to do is have just enough faith to believe in him then you shall not perish you shall have everlasting life because that's what Jesus came for that he was a solution back in Genesis when they were still in the garden there was the solution and we can go over those verses with you at another time for another book. But I just want you to be encouraged. I know we're going through different points right now. Um, at talking about forgiving yourself. Especially I want to focus on that one. You know, if the Lord of all creation thinks us that we're important enough to send his only son to take all of our sins upon himself, then don't you believe that if he can forgive us enough to do that, that we should forgive ourselves and strive to do better. You know, do what the Jesus told the, the woman he saved. He said, go and sin no more. The woman that he met at the well said, yeah, you do not have the husband, the man you are with is not your husband. And you've had other husbands. And he told her right at the well. Go and sin no more. He didn't say there was anything else she had to do, but believe on that forgiveness and go sin no more. So if you've done things in your past, if you had a rough childhood, if you're just not happy with yourself, maybe some of you can't even look in the mirror and look yourself in the eye. I'm telling you today that you don't have to live like that. You can forgive yourself because God already did. So much so that he sent his son to die for all of your sins, just like you are. Let him pick you up off the ground. Let him dust all the dirt off of you. Let him wipe the tears from your eyes. Let him hold you. Let him comfort you. Let him love on you. That's what he did for me. When I was 15 and had no hope, had a bad childhood, felt like nobody wanted me around, mistreated, abused, just disregarded on top of being neglected, you know, God was there. If it weren't for him, I would not be here today. I had every intention of taking my life that night when I was 15. And I didn't want to, and I cried out to him, but nobody wanted me around. I was in everybody's way. And he was very clear, just resonated from inside my being, this voice, like it was in the room with me, wanted me there, wanted me to stay here. So I want you all to be encouraged. This is a season where we lose so many people because they bottom out and they feel like nobody wants them or they feel like their sin is more than they can carry or that they can't do what they need to do for their families. They just you know, feel like they can't meet up to the expectations here. But I'm going to tell you, believe on Christ. You've already met his 
expectations. If you just believe on him, that's the only expectation that you have to have to to meet. That's the only thing that's going to matter after this life. If you just believe on him, he's going to go ahead and bless you with other things. I'm not saying that you're going to have an easy life because you're not. Those who love Christ are going to carry the cross like he did. And it, it's, a, it's a cross you may not see in wood, but it is a cross. It is the burden that Christians carry because people in this world do not believe in Christ and they will persecute you for your beliefs. But unlike him, they can't bless you with food for your family out of nowhere. They can't bless you with health. They can't bless you with peace peace of mind and help you to carry on when you've lost loved ones and children and your family is, is, is throwing you away. They can't, the world can't do that for you, but God can. God can do all those things. It's because of him that I'm here today. And I'm going to tell you, Every day I look around, and I have food now galore, which I didn't have when I was growing up. I have a roof over my head. I don't have to worry about being put out, put out of it. You know, I have room to move around freely. I have health, though I'm not the healthiest person. I've had lots of surgeries and lots of problems that he brought me through. But I look at all the goodness and all the greatness, just like these mountains back behind me. He's blessed me with this part of my life to be able to to look at. Although most of my life I spent as a beach girl. I love the ocean. Still do. But he's given me his peace. He's given me his love. He tells us that he'll never leave us or forsake us. And I'm telling you that he hasn't. At 15 years old, when I had nothing else I felt to live for, he came in mightily and bit by bit through my life has brought my attention back to the things that he has for me, the plans he has to prosper me. And I want that for you too. And you can have it. The holidays are really hard on a lot of people. A lot of people get really depressed. A lot of people take their own lives during the holidays. But I'm going to tell you, while there is breath in your body, there is time. There is still hope. You have this hope now. Just call on his name. John 3.16 you don't have to be dressed. You could be in your home nude. He don't care. John 3, 16. Reach out and take hold of your salvation. And don't let the world or anything in it take it from you. It is worth it. And he is worthy. Thank you so much for listening to my bits of my testimony. I hope that it encourages you. I hope that it helps you all to seek him. Don't seek him last. Don't take care of everything you can take care of and then like, oh, he's last resort. Let me call on God. No. Seek him first. You know, I've, I've known a lot of pastors that their, their preaching puts it out, almost makes you feel like you should be ashamed to ask God for things. And that, oh, he's, he's in a box. You can only ask him at this point. But that's all a lie. He is there freely available to you. All you have to do is call on his name and your life will begin to change. I challenge you to do that. You won't regret it. Is it an easy walk? Do things get wonderful? Do I give him rich? No, not necessarily. I guess some do, depending on what his purposes are for them and for the money that he allows them to get. But I can tell you what, that this is a very short life we have here on earth. What, 120 years or so at most? And eternity is forever. So reach out to him today and start building up things in eternity. Where moths and rust do not corrupt them. Grab hold of that for yourself. Don't let it escape. Don't let the turmoil in this world take that away from you. Don't let them change your mind if you already have faith and you've been discouraged and saying, oh, this happened and this happened and this child died and this husband left and this person was killed and, and my illness and I'm dying of cancer. Don't let those things take away your faith in Christ. He loves you. He is the same today, tomorrow, and yesterday. Beginning and end, he never changes. I find that 
most of the time when people can't feel his presence after they've accepted Christ as the Lord and Savior, it's because they've walked away. And you just need to return. Most people don't even recognize that, that story about the prodigal son. Well, guess what? If you walked away, that's you. So come on back. So I love you guys. I pray the best for you. I have high hopes for you in Christ Jesus, our Lord. And I pray that you receive the joy that may not cause you to laugh and may not cause you to have a smile on your face, but that joy of security in your soul, within you, that you know who you belong to and you know that he has you in his hands. And as he says, nothing and no one can take you out of his hand. Just believe him. Trust him. What have you got to lose? Take care. Thanks a lot for watching. See you next time. Bye-bye.